All right, this is gonna be a real quick, pretty simple um, how to make a pinch pot video. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have already done this in elementary school, so in a way it's kind of review. Obviously, as sixth graders, we can go a little bigger with this. Um, my requirements for this is it's gotta be functional and decorative. It doesn't have to be fancy. Um, form should follow function, which means function is more important, most important. If you want it to hold change, make something that's going to hold change for you. If you want to make a coffee cup for mom and dad, make sure it's nice and strong. If we can do some polka dots or some stripes or some simple decorations on it to make it interesting, that's just kind of a bonus. Okay. Um, the thing that a lot of sixth graders don't quite understand is that I do most of the work on this, which I'm happy to do. But when you're doing clay on fr or, or whatever the next day, tomorrow, when you're doing clay tomorrow, you can't back yourself in a corner, okay? Clay's permanent. It dries out. Once it's dry out, there's nothing you can do with it. So you got to listen to what I'm about to tell you in the video. So on clay day, you're not kind of backing yourself in the corner and setting yourself up for failure. So keep it real simple, okay? Um, the steps, real simple. I'm going to put this camera down so you can see what's going on. Everybody is going to get a clay, kind of a lump of clay. It's going to start off flat like this, okay? Um, I'll show you where we're kind of headed with this. This is a basic pinch pot that's been fired and glazed. This is a level three pinch pot. Um, it's nice and round, which I guess yours doesn't have to be. The walls are the same thickness, which is important, and I'll talk about that. They did a good job of glazing. It's not perfectly smooth, but there's no major imperfections. If everybody did this, I'd be pretty pleased. The only problem with this is that it's a little bit boring. It's just a blue, plain pinch pot. So, like I said, if you can do a little better on the decoration, that would be amazing. Okay, back to your lump of clay. When I give this to you, everybody loves having clay in their hands. It feels squishy. A lot of people do some stupid things with this that just kind of get them in trouble as far as the project goes. When I give you the clay, it's perfect, okay? It's not too wet. It's not too dry. It is perfect. So don't waste any time goofing around with it because you're kind of going to lose that perfect window when the clay is best to work with. First thing everybody's going to do is they're going to take part of it a small piece and this becomes your emergency fund and you're going to kind of set this off to the side. So if you're wanting to do a coffee mug and you need extra clay for a handle, this is where you're going to get it from. If you want a lid for a cup or something, this is where you're going to get the clay from. You can't keep asking me for clay because I need to make sure I've got enough for fourth quarter. So whatever I give you is what you're going to get, All right? So make sure you take some, set it off to the side for kind of an emergency fund. Okay. That goes off to the side. Now, with the rest of this, you're going to use your palms and you're going to start patting it into a ball. Okay. And I'm using my palms because they're smooth. If I use my fingertips, I'm going to have finger, finger creases and finger lines all over this thing. And I don't want that. Okay. So first I'm going to just kind of squish it into a ball and then I'm going to use my palms and pat it into a ball. Now, now is the time to get rid of any major imperfections. You can see that there's these big kind of creases and lines. You can take care of that right now. And it does not have to be perfect. You'd be wasting your time doing a perfect sphere here. That's not what we're after. But major imperfections need to try to go away. Okay, and once you get all the major lumps and major lines out of it, time for step two. Now, before I get to step two, our goal here is to have a basic pinch pot and the walls need to be the same thickness. And why that's important is that doesn't give it any weak spots. If it is different thicknesses, you're gonna have weak spots all over the place. So what I've done is I've already made a pinch pot and I've kind of cut it in half. You can kind of see, I'll move this pinch pot that I have cut in half and you can see the inside of the, the thickness of this kind of U shape here is about as thick as my thumb. So I kind of call that the rule of thumb, any thicker than your thumb and your clay will never dry out, which means it's going to break in the kiln. And if it's any thinner than your thumb, it could be a little thinner, but if it's a lot thinner than your thumb, it's going to break just when you use it every day. So the rule of thumb, thickness is a big, big deal when it comes to pinch pots. Okay. So when I go to do this next step, I have to keep in mind that kind of rule of thumb. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my thumb in the middle of it and make kind of the initial opening. And the depth of the thumb is very important. If I go too far, the bottom of my project is going to be real thin. You can see I just suck my thumb in it. If I don't go far enough, the bottom of my project's going to be real thick. So now that I've got my thumb in it, now it's just lots of little pinches. And I'm going to slowly rotate it around. And I've got my finger, my hand kind of held like this. And I'm pinching my thumb against my other four fingers. And as I go around, 
I'm kind of looking for the thick parts of the wall and I'm knocking those down just by pinching the, thin, the clay to be thinner. All right, and as I rotate, I'm starting at the bottom of the project, so way towards the bottom and kind of spiraling my way towards the top, okay? And it's real important that if you come across a thin part on a wall of your pinch pot that you leave it alone, and if you come, upon part of, if you come across the thick part, you kind of pinch it and knock it down. Okay, and you can see pretty simple, pretty quick, I've got a pretty basic pinch pot. It's a little bit lumpy. The inside's relatively smooth. You can get the inside to be real smooth if you do lots of little pinches. If you attack this like your lobster man or woman, you're gonna, you're gonna have a lot of dents on your pinch pot you have to then go fix. But that probably took just a couple minutes and that's gonna leave me 25 to 30 minutes left of class to put a handle on it for a coffee cup, to put cool decorations on it, to make it into something kind of unique, make it into an artwork. Okay, so making a pinch pot's real simple. It's, it's real important you get this right the first try because if I have to restart this, my clay is now that much drier and everything just got that much harder to, harder to do. Okay, the clay has its own little timer. As it starts to dry out, it's gonna start to crack. It'll tell you when it's getting dry. I can't extend that time at all. You can't extend that time at all. You gotta kinda listen to the clay. So try to get that right on the first try. Okay, now, I got my basic pinch pot. It's nothing fancy. Um, I'm not quite done with it yet. I ha it has a nice rounded base on it, and I want to get rid of that because I don't want it to roll around when I set it on my dresser or wherever I end up putting this thing. So I'm going to kind of bounce it on the table and, and give it a flatter base so now it won't roll around. Now it's pretty sturdy. And that's, that's it for a basic, basic pinch pot. Okay, now, other things. When it comes to attaching clay to clay, so for example, let's say I want, let's say I want to make a, a little monster guy or something. So using my emergency fund, my extra clay, I'll make two eyeballs. See, see the monster guy yelling at you right there? Okay, now this is pretty popular. A lot of sixth graders make these monster guys. You could do the same thing, make it into a, a, a handle. I'm gonna teach you scoring and slipping. Attaching clay to clay is very, very important. I am not requiring you to do this, but if you're gonna do it, you've gotta do it right, okay? Um, the kiln, in a way, will grade these for me. Um, if your project comes out of the kiln in pieces, your grade goes down. If your project comes out of the kiln because it's broken, your grade goes down. If the project comes out of the kiln, you missed a lot of spots glazing, your grade goes down. So if you're gonna do this, please do it right. Now, you're gonna have a cup of tools, and in that cup of tools, you should be able to get your hands on a fork. Please do not eat the clay, that's a no-no. But it's called scoring and slipping, and how this works is, if you've ever tried to glue two smooth surfaces together, there's nothing for the glue to hold on to. So if I score or scratch up the surface, that'll be on your BAV, and you kind of make, make it kind of a rough surface there. And I do the same thing on my pinch pot. So I use the fork to make lots of scratches. Now there's kind of a texture there for the, for the glue to hold these two pieces together. Now, that glue is slick. Grab a little water cup here. I'm gonna get, now my hands are dirty, they're full of clay. Get a little water on them. And you can see that that, that makes kind of like a muddy mess on my fingers there. That becomes slit. So I'm gonna put a little slip on there and all, all slip is is water and clay it's a mix water and clay that acts like glue and you get both parts wet now move the water cup and here's the trick to making scoring and slipping work you've got to kind of rotate it on okay don't just slap it on that's not going to work you put it on in your in you like a suction cup kind of you rotate that on and when it starts to hold you'll feel it so it'd be it'd be kind of hard to pull that back off Okay, so I put that on there, and the final step is to smooth the seam so it looks like it was one original piece of clay to begin with, so you don't see that line where the two pieces of clay are connecting. And once you've done that, that should be one of the strongest parts of your project. So, kind of made him goofy looking here. I'll do it again with the other eyeball here. Scratch it up where I want it. Scratch it up where I want it. So scored both, both surfaces there, get a little water, put it on both parts again, and rotate it on until you feel it kind of hold, and then you smooth those seams so it all looks like one original piece of clay again. Now, I'm moving pretty quick just to keep this video kind of short, 
My clay is lumpy. It's starting to get some cracks in it. Don't, you can fix those just by getting your thumb a little bit wet. Adding too much water is a huge no-no, but you can smooth with your thumb. Now, there is a big difference between smoothing and pinching. If I keep pinching, my project's going to get really, really thin and it's going to break. So I'm not pinching now, I'm just smoothing. Okay? And it's important to keep a smooth project because whatever you build tomorrow, you're going to have to glaze. And glaze is not easy to work with. Glaze is kind of like a paint for clay. And if you've got a lot of small imperfections, it's impossible to glaze them all. Okay, so you can kind of see the monster I've scored and slipped his eyes on. Okay, a couple other things. Um, this is called a fettling knife, all right? It's nothing too sharp, but don't, don't do anything foolish with these. You can't hurt somebody with these. It's not sharp like a steak knife or anything. Um, it's sharp enough just to cut clay. How this works is let's say I wanted to cut something out of clay so I'll just make a simple triangle but I can make nice straight lines and just like that I made a triangle so I don't know if you're wanting to make a KU, MU, your initials, letters, all that stuff that's what a fettling knife's for. Now a lot of people make a giant mistake with this fettling knife and I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not but let's say instead of making it out of clay I just want to carve it in clay I'll do an S. Now the problem with the S that I just created is that I will never be able to get glaze in that thin, deep crack that I just created with a fettling knife. You've got to use the right tools. And in this case, the right tool is a wire loop tool. And they look like this. And they've got kind of a wire loop end on them. You can see that there. And what it will do is instead of a line letter, it kind of removes clay and it will make that line into a shape and, it, and I can color in a shape real easy but I cannot color in a line very easy so the idea is this will make my glazing a lot easier okay and it's important you can't miss any spots when you glaze or the glaze really doesn't do its job you got to hit all those spots so you carve that letter or initial or shape or polka dot whatever you guys are wanting to put in the side with a wire loop tool get your finger maybe a little bit wet you can smooth all that out and now I've got that letter in the side of the pinch pot and it's easy to get get a, a big thick paintbrush with big thick glaze or paint inside that thing okay pretty simple now when you are finished I suggest you spend some time maybe getting your thumb a little bit wet and smoothing out as many imperfections as you possibly can. And once you get your pinch pot exactly the way you want it and it's as perfect as you can make it, the last step is to take a tool and on the bottom you can scratch it in real thin. We won't be glazing the bottoms on these anyway. But you're going to need to put your initials and whatever hour you're in, whatever class you're in, so first hour, second hour, third hour. So I'll just pretend this is for first hour. I'll put my initials in a number one. And when I'm done, then I would go set it on the back board. And this is where the video ends. And the real live Mr. Sheriff will now take over.